Experts from the world's chemical weapons watchdog say they're making encouraging progress towards dismantling serious stockpiles. A team from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons is in Damascus for talks with officials. A UN report earlier concluded that nerve gas had indeed been used on a large scale in August, but the consistency of the findings are under question, as Oksana Boyko explains to me earlier. The report on the use of chemical weapons, the first report was uh, released a couple of weeks ago. The next report is expected by the end of the, of the year, and this is going to be the full report. But inspectors claim to use very robust, very reliable scientific methods. But if you actually go and look at the report, there are so many questions. And the main question is, of course, um, the reliability of the whole research. Because uh, just to explain you quickly, what the inspectors did, they, they went to several sites around the Guta area, um, the area that produced that horrible videos of dead children and dead bodies. And um, at one location they spent around two hours, at the, uh, another location they spent around five hours, and they tried to collect samples, environmental samples, tissues, uh, fabrics, soil, and also interviews survivors and take blood samples from them. And the biggest problem there is that none of the environmental samples that they took in West Guta tested positively for sarin, but all the survivors, for some reason, tested positively. I, I suggest we listen to one of the sound bites from the interview that uh, I did with uh, Angela Kane, the UN High Representative for Disarmament Affairs. I think that would put things into perspective. They did prove that, that sarin was evident in the samples they found. But on the other hand, if they did not find uh, samples in the, environmental, in the environmental samples, if they did not find sarin in the environmental samples, it just testifies to, to the honesty of the reinspections that they're saying, this is what we found, this is what we took. Now, of course, uh, it's interesting that uh, Ms. Kane would talk about the honesty of the inspectors. I think we would expect nothing less from the you and personnel, but uh, you need to understand what actually happened. Whenever the investigators had a chance to do that job, whenever the, they had a freedom to go around and collect samples, none of them test positively. And yet, whenever they tried to get some tissue samples from people who were pre-selected by the opposition, they all test positively. And this is statistically, it's simply impossible. I mean, there are just two possible explanations. Either the United Nations inspectors didn't know how to do their job and, you know, collect uh, those environmental samples, or the opposition tried to influence the investigation and uh, brought people who were probably exposed to sarin but at some other location. And you make your pick. I mean, it's up to you who you trust more, the UN inspectors or the, the opposition. What I find extremely interesting and inexplicable to me is that the UN inspectors and the UN report would still claim that they have clear and convincing evidence that sarin was used, whereas, as we just discussed, those evidence are neither clear nor consistent. Mm. But still, the investigation is continuing, of course. But, uh, of course, the reported death toll of the mass chemical attack near Damascus ranges from hundreds to thousands. Uh, do, uh, well, actually, did the inspectors examine the bodies themselves? Well, it, it is also a very interesting case because uh, we all remember that, you know, those pictures of dead children and dead bodies were the main case for President Obama, the main reason for uh, President Obama to go to war in Syria. He wanted to punish President Assad for killing all those people. And what's strange uh, is that the UN inspectors didn't even request to see neither of those bodies. They didn't want to see the autopsies. They didn't want to go to the morgues. And um, this is uh, how uh, Ms. Kane explained the reasons why uh, none of such requests were made. There were so many victims who were still alive that there was really no need to, to exhume bodies and, uh, and basically take uh, tissue from them because there were so many victims who were alive, but we had also complete case history, meaning that the victims were able to tell how they were affected, what they felt, what the symptoms were, which is much more powerful than taking tissue from, from, a, from a body. Well, uh, um, in my humble opinion, autopsies are a very, very rich source of any sort of information. And moreover, the UN inspectors cite a lot of stories about, a lot of interviews about how many people were killed. At some point in the report, they say that uh, there were like 
uh, a, a family of 40 people killed in Zam uh, Zamalka, and yet for some reason they make absolutely no effort to go and see those bodies.